everyone, you know, it's wonderful to talk to people. Everyone has a story. Everything has a story. And I love to have these conversations with. And today I'm going to have a story above all stories with the greatest person ever. I grew up watching him, fell in love with him, thought I was going to be his girlfriend one day when he was on Happy Days. That's the Fonz. I'm talking about none other than actor, uh, humanitarian, global citizen, director, producer, all around human being, the great Henry Winkler. Hello, Henry Winkler. How are you? I'm so happy to be with you, April. I'm happy to be with you. First of all, let me say this. When I first met you, I thought I was going to lose my mind. And it was a couple of years ago. I think, was it at Politicon or something? Yes, it was. It was P Politicon. I was interviewing Malcolm Nance uh, for his new book. And there you were. And we, we crossed the room and said hello to each other. And then at that time, we could hug. Yes, at that time we could hug. At that, it is so interesting you say at that time we could hug and you have Fouch on the couch. I'm looking at Dr. Fauci, not on TV, but <laughs> on a pillow. Why do you have Dr. Fauci on a pillow or in your room? Why? I'll, I'll tell you exactly why. First of all, he keeps my family safe. For, uh, second of all, I admire him to, to no end because no matter what the abuse is that comes toward him, he always maintains his, his strength. Uh, and because it's a reminder that we must listen to the people who actually know that this COVID, 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 COVID is a real thing. It is a real thing. It is so real. And I believe we are now going to find our new normal after this. What is our new normal? What does that look like, you know? You know, well, I, I, I know that if uh, America decides that we need a change, if we decide that it is really time that we take our country back, the new normal is going to take a while to get back into place. It's not all going to change in a minute. That I know. And so it is. Um, uh, we are resilient. Um, we've been down uh, as a country, uh, we have been disappointing as a country, and now we can rise like the phoenix out of the ash. So, you know, you have been in so many movies, not just in Happy Days, a uh, television show that I watched in real time as a kid. Right, I, which I appreciate. Yeah, I mean, you know, I was so jealous of Pinky Tuscadero and how she did whatever she did with her hands. I tell you, I was such a fan of yours. And, you know, I watched that show, Good Time, sure. um, The Jeffersons. That was all in that era. I grew up in that era. I'm 53 years old. All so well written and so funny. Yeah, right. And we are now in a different time where we're looking more at reality TV. Yes. But nonetheless, the new normal. It's not allowing Hollywood to be Hollywood. It's right. not allowing us to be viewers and participators of Hollywood. Right. What does the new normal look like in your industry um, for us? Well, you, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. There are things shooting or right. just starting to shoot. Uh, there are 100 pages of rules. Like, I will just tell you one, there is my favorite part of the set is the snack table uh, filled with everybody's favorite snacks. Uh, that can no longer be. We cannot have people touching. Uh, you know, you pick up a, a thing of cereal, you pick up a thing of bread, you pick up the jam, and that doesn't exist anymore. There used to be a makeup person for the cast. Sure. Now, there has to be a makeup person for one or two cast members only. Uh, there are, and those are just two little tiny changes. Uh, COVID test daily. Yes. Yet now, Tyler Perry figured this out. He built this entire complex in Atlanta. Uh, he has everybody quarantined. Uh, he has several shows going at once. They all live there in his compound. What, uh, I mean, it, it was so incredible that he put his money where his mouth was. Uh, but it, it, that's not possible for all productions. 
So were you in part of uh, the compounding at Tyler Pierce? Cause I texted, we were texting at one time. I asked him how I was doing. He said, yeah, we're quarantined. And I'm like, I didn't realize the extent of the quarantine, like you said. So were you one of those quarantined on his set by any chance? No, but we were at a table reading Barry for the third season. We were reading the new scripts for our HBO show. Yes. And we got a call. Don't come in tomorrow. We're not going to read the other scripts uh, that we have prepared. Then we got a call. Don't come in again. And I have been in my house with my puppies, my wife, uh, and some family members that are in our bubble uh, since um, March 19th. You know, I've been in the house since March, and it's, it's you go stir crazy. Yeah. So and it's, it's either time to lose Are it. you living by yourself or do you have some friends or family members with you? Well, um, I have my children and our dog. Great. And we, we, we live in the woods and we find different things to do. We, we do a lot of nature hikes. We go bicycle riding. Um, we do a couple, we're trying to make it interesting. Yes. You know, things in different parts of the house. But it is, it's different. This is a time of either going stir crazy because we are not people to isolate and we are now isolating. Um, but at the same time, this is also time for those who are looking at it as creativity. Is this your creative moment? Are you writing something? Are you creating? You know what? I will tell you, honestly, here, it, 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 what a perfect segue. Our newest novel for uh, fourth to seventh grade came out um, uh, two weeks ago. Uh, this is our 35th novel that I've written with Lynn Oliver. It is about an alien who's cobalt blue, whose blood is purple, who is a stranger in a strange land. Most children are strangers in a strange land. And it's a comedy. We think that it is so tense at this moment. Children, they pick it up. They feel it. They feel it from their parents. They feel it from their friends, their friends' parents, if they have a, a pod to go to. In this tense time, we think children should laugh. And hopefully, uh, that's what we've done with uh, Alien Superstar, Lights, Camera, Danger, uh, our second novel in the Alien Superstar. Now, I, when you said an alien from a strange land, I think about, as you say, the children, um, but I also think about your story, your unique story. You have gained, you've garnered so much success, so many awards, just being who you are, but your road wasn't an easy road. And for a lot of people, they don't know that you have dyslexia. Yes. Well, one out of five or six children on the earth or um or burn uh, are born no, they're not burn. <laughs> are, are born uh learning differently yeah uh, it is not their fault it is baked in it is in their wiring in their dna it is hereditary yeah. and uh but here's what i say to every child uh whether they have a learning challenge uh, a physical challenge a um a sports challenge whatever it is how you learn has nothing to do with how brilliant you are. That the thoughts in your head are bigger than any challenge you might have. And what's interesting is, and, and going back to the cobalt blue alien with purple blood, you yes. said a stranger in a different land. And for many kids who have a learning difference, be it dyslexia, be it... Uh, auditory processing or what have you. Right, right. It's like a stranger in a different land. And now with all of this, it compounds it. So what do you say to people? And it's not just kids. A lot of adults are finding out. Right. They don't process the way what's considered normal is. I mean, exactly. heard Charles Schwab, what is it? Uh, Whoopi Goldberg. A lot of people have oh, learned my goodness. and co had coping skills that make them a success. Right. You know, one thing is will. I wanted not to be a flash in the pan. I wanted not to be on a hit show and then disappear. And, um, you know, uh, I might show up on a, on a commercial sometime, which is not a bad thing. I, I, I started doing commercials, but I'm just saying I didn't want to just disappear in a puff of smoke. Your will, your tenacity. I live by two words tenacity 
and generosity, gratitude. Amen. You know, people say, oh, he's such a nice guy. You're such a nice guy. I don't even know how to process that. What I am is grateful that I'm on this earth. I love being alive. You know, Chris Rock, I just thought about this. Chris Rock went on The Breakfast Club recently talking about his learning difference as well. There are more people with learning differences um, than we know that's out there. With, without a doubt. Yeah. And, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I, I was just going to say that in the third grade, from third grade testing, that's how um, prisons decide how many cells to build. They, they, they look at third graders and uh, because I think over 51% of everybody who is incarcerated has some sort of learning challenge. They are unbelievably bright. They just fell through the cracks because our educational system is archaic. And you know, it's interesting you say third grade and I'm told that if you, if you don't catch it by the third grade, it's pretty much over. Well, I don't, I don't believe that. Uh, April, I, I don't think I don't believe true. it either, but that's what I've heard from yeah. educators. You know what, if you, you, if you tell a child, if you see that your child is having trouble or acting out, they are not trying to be idiots for, on purpose. They rather just be accepted and be able to uh, do math or spell or whatever it is. I'm going to be 75 in just a few days. Really? And I still can't spell. I mean, I can't even sound out schedule. And I use that word almost every day in an email. But I did pretty well. You sure did. I'm going to give you a secret. Um, don't tell anyone. I have the worst time with Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> you schedule it on Wednesday. I'm like, oh my gosh. So <laughs> and, and here it is. Here it is. Your job is to spell. Your right. job is to write down That's what's right. happening That's in right. your world to let us know. Amen. Just don't ask me to tell you about Wednesday. So right. <laughs> there you are sitting in the White House. How about that? How about, How about that? that? How about that? And you have seen, let's talk about the arc that you've seen in this, I guess, this moment in history, because we're just a blip compared to everything. Right, that's right. But, but you know what? We're living in this blip. So this blip, even though it is so small in the big scale, it is so meaningful to us right now, to my five grandchildren, right. to my children, to you, to your kids living um, with you under, under your roof. This moment, it, we celebrate the wrong P. We are celebrating profit mm. and not the population. There are 300 million of us. And I grew up thinking 300 million plus of us are really important. And yet we think differently, we look different, we, we, uh, we celebrate differently, we all have a religious um, uh, point of view that is different. But underneath, we are exactly the same. And this particular moment is so disrespectful to the human condition, to the human spirit, that I have such anxiety my friends have such anxiety at this second as i talk to you it's it is unfair it is not it's not worthy of who we are as a country i think you know and there is an anxiousness and i've talked to people globally all around the world and they are waiting to see what happens because yeah. we are we set the the pace yeah and there is such anxiety and i say from the unique perch that i've been blessed to sit in for 23 years at the white house yes. january 13th it will be 24 believe it or not unbelievable um i say it's not about politics after watching all of these years it's not about politics it's not about party it's about people and we forget that. It's yes. about humanity right. and we have forgotten that. And I, I am so with you. We have to go back internally and figure out 
who we are, where we are, because this moment pretty much is going to send us into the future. And how, right, how we agree, disagree, how we meld, how we don't meld, will set the course for the next 20, 30 years. Yeah, it's true. And and here's the thing that, you know, um, how, how one person can create so much chaos. I mean, you would not, anybody who is listening to this, you wouldn't stand that if that was happening in your house. No. You wouldn't stand for that if that was happening with a friend of yours, um, you know, at a party, uh, anywhere in your life. You would think, this is crazy. We, you know, hey, cut that out. It is our turn to say, hey, cut that out. Hey, cut that out. Uh, you know, we're not going to, as I said before, we're not going to solve the problem. But look, I understand how important corporations are. I understand how important they are to the very fabric of this country. But so is the middle class. So is the class of all of us that are living in the borders of America. You know, I, I don't like candles uh, to um, uh, an oil company. I don't light a candle to people who make soap. I use the soap. I use the oil. But I use it, and then I want to share it. Mm. So what's the share? What do we have to do, in your opinion? What's the share? What's the heart of the sharing? It is the very heart of America. I, I've, I've said this now before, but there was a disaster. There was a fire in, a, in, a, in an apartment building. A woman, I, I saw this on the news, a woman is holding her baby over the railing on the third floor. I don't think she was yelling down, hey, what race are you? What religion are you? No, 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 you can't catch my kid. Well, he'll burn, but you know, I don't like you. We depend on each other. Somebody is down there. Somebody different from you is ready to catch your child, is ready to take you off the roof if there is a disaster and a flood, is ready to help you rebuild your entire town if there is a fire. And oh, can I just mention that a lot of the forests in the West are federal land, not state owned. What does that possibly mean about taking care of sweeping the forests? It's the federal government's responsibility, yes, of, for their own as well as, but that's a whole nother conversation. So, and I just can't, as I sit here looking at you, I see Dr. Fauci looking over you, but I wanna, yeah, you know, and he is gonna go down in history as an expert who cares, you know, he doesn't, he's- Who he, never stops. Right, who never stops. And he, you and Dr. Fauci are around the same age and you would not believe either one of you are at that age. And I know that Dr. Fauci, so many people have him on speed dial. I heard even Chris Rock has him on uh, speed dial. Can you I know? ask you a question? Do you know his number? Because <laughs> I, I would call him and say, I am, I love you so much. He but, is amazing. So, so if you had a chance to talk to Dr. Fauci, yes. beyond saying, what should we be doing in this moment? Because as we're talking, fall is setting in. As we're talking, people are having to go indoors. We have seen in this moment, you know, people are going to watch this years from now. And in this moment, we are now seeing at least 225,000 deaths yes. uh, in the United States. And the numbers are expected to grow as people are going to go inside. Yes. Children are going to go inside the schoolhouses. Yes. Outside. What would you say to Dr. Fauci? I would say, Dr. Fauci, what do I do my, for my family? And what should the world know? What would you ask Dr. Fauci? All right. I would, I would, he tells us that. You know, that, that information is already clear. What I would say is do not lose your center. Do not be bullied ever. Now, he is not so far, but look at how many of the, the foundation of the um, uh, FDA, the, uh, the, 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 the critical uh, CDC, or I don't know, I'm so dyslexic, I can't remember. Uh, Center, for the, Center for Disease Control. Yeah. Center for Disease Control. All of those people are being 
being tilted or being twisted or being forced to say things that don't take care of us, only take care of one person. I would say to him, we are behind you. Just keep telling us the truth because the truth, we will survive if we know the truth. And I want to get to your industry. Um, I loved you and Waterboy. Thank you. <laughs> I love Adam Sandler. And to see I do too. I yeah, do too. he is amazing. He makes you laugh in the midst of crazy. Right. Um, but I love you. I love many of your films, but Waterboy is the best one to me. Thank um, you. Well, for me, because I need to laugh. I love to laugh because absolutely. I absolutely. Like so um, and let me just say, you would love Night Shift, Ron Howard's first film for a major studio, uh, Michael Keaton's first film. Uh, he said, uh, Ron said to me, hey, you can play either role. I thought, hey, I played someone who was very flamboyant, the Fonz, for 10 years. I'm now going to play Richie. And so I played the very quiet milk toast. But Night Shift still holds up. So, and, and, that's, and, and that goes into my question, kind of sort of, your industry. Yes. Um, what do you, are you, are, you, are there any fears in this moment for your industry moving forward? Because we don't know how long this is going to last. How will the, the, this very lucrative industry survive? And you, you say you play flamboyant to milk toast. Where do you land in this? Well, I'll tell you, I, I don't, I know that shows that were picked up where the cast was so excited to go back to work have just been canceled because until there is a vaccine, we're not getting out of this mess. And then once there is a vaccine, possibly in June of next year, really safely, it's gonna take a while for that vaccine to kick in so that we can start to stamp COVID out completely. Right, for global inoculations, not yes. just here in this country. Yeah. The, the industry does not know what to do. I mean, look, um, Zoom uh, just came alive and here we are having interviews where we would do this in a studio somewhere uh, at some time. Now we're doing it from our homes, but I feel connected to you. I feel comfortable um, uh, in having a wonderful interview just this way, but things are changing. The delivery system is different. Yeah. The delivery system will forever be changed. Well, you know what? I will say this. Delivery systems are, might change. Mm -hmm. But the content, if you're not good at what you do, if you're not interesting, if, if you're not uh, committed to having an interview in whatever the delivery system is, it won't work. You still need the humanness. Yes. Yeah. So, so you're hearing shows are being canceled. Oh my goodness. That were picked up. That, oh my gosh, they thought we're doing another season and boom. So what are people watching more so? What are you hearing in your industry? What are you, we know streaming is big, but what are people watching at this moment? Well, I will tell you one thing. I, I will tell you that uh, uh, sports, uh, the, you know, the, uh, the soccer league, the football league from Europe is becoming very big. My sons are like really into that. But there is a movie yeah. that is called My Octopus Teacher. I, and I, I don't know if it's on Netflix or if it's on um, My Octopus Teacher. I, if I don't recommend anything to your audience, I recommend that. It will change your life. It will, will make your heart sing. So it's all, you know, every time something comes on, particularly on Netflix, when you see something new, it's like, okay, I'll watch that. And once that's all, so what's next? So we are in that, that crush of hunger. We're yes. wanting more. We're wanting more. Yes. And, and what's happening is also we're wanting more. Let's go back into TV. You're talking about sports. I didn't realize that sports was really being played until this weekend. And I watched this and said, wait a minute, is this a real one? They said, no, this is real. Yeah. But people are, you know, sports teams are being sidelined because of COVID. People are not running their campaigns because of COVID. It's right. Point, you know, but COVID is interfering with every part of our lives. 
the question is, how long will this be able to sustain this way? Because we are, we are in need of your industry. We need to be entertained. We need to be informed. Do you know what? And the industry feels that pressure. I mean, not only economically, but they know uh, how important entertainment is. Uh, it, it just is. Uh, where the hour, the entertainment we make in Hollywood, uh, in, in Atlanta, um, in, in Portland, the entertainment we make is seen all over the world. Canada. Uh, you know, so we know how important it is. We adapt. We Americans, we are pioneers. We um, forged a country out of wilderness. And if this pandemic is a wilderness, then we're going to chop through it and come out the other side. I truly believe it. I am so proud to be an American. I and my parents escaped Nazi Germany. I am first generation. And I am so grateful they got to these shores and that I am an American. I'm so glad you said that my daughter um, is doing a report and she was talking about that, about the Holocaust and seeing yes. all the atrocities, yes. the atrocities that we need to all separately hold up and say, this was wrong and this was wrong. And, and we are, you and I are the fruit of the strength that came out of yes. the atrocities. Exactly right. But I will say something else. It's not just that we have to hold up the atrocity to say it went on. People were capable of being so hateful. Mm. People were capable of being so destructive to their fellow human being. That is something we have got to watch to not let take over our world. Because that is like a fungus that wraps around a tree, the tree being our country, and just strangles the life out of that tree. So let me out ask of that you, country. you know, let me ask you this. Some people are not as sensitive about that strangulation. They don't see the knot being formed at first. Yes. And, and sometimes I wonder, are we so far removed from slavery, from the Holocaust, that people don't see the signs right away? What do you say? Well, I will tell you that uh, uh, I was just part of a Holocaust special uh, that was aired on television. And it is surprising how many young people have no idea that it existed, how many people deny that it existed. Listen, I have letters from the Nazis about my family. When my mom and dad came here, they came alone. I never had grandparents. I never had real aunts and uncles. Uh, all of my aunts and uncles were other people who escaped the Germany and landed in New York City. And they were my uh, extended family. As a matter of fact, I had an Aunt Erna who, who, who um, was smuggled out of Germany uh, during uh, the Nazi era in a coffin. At her feet was a spider plant. And a spider plant just keeps rejuvenating itself. So everybody in New York got a cutting that was, you know, in this circle spider plant. of survivors of a spider plant. It grew on the windowsill of my apartment on West 78th Street in New York City growing up. When I moved here because I got the fawns, I cut uh, some of those um, rejuvenating uh, new baby spider plants and I planted them here and it is growing outside of my kitchen. And then as my children uh, started a family and, and had their own, I cut the babies, put them in pots. They now have that spider plant that came out of Germany in a coffin in 39, 1939. How about that? And that's keeping the lessons and, and, and the understanding, the lessons learned. It's keeping the history. Never forget. Never forget. Uh, yeah. And I'm five generations removed from the last known slave in my family. He was sold on the auction block in Fayetteville, North Carolina. His name was Joseph Dollar Brown. And God only knows, you know, what he would think that his great, great granddaughter would be asking questions of four United States presidents. How about that? How and about you, that? And you being the fawns with that spider plant and the cuttings, 
we have made our ancestors proud. You bet. But we're not alone. If you look at us, hey, I'm dyslexic. I'm short. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I didn't, when I became a star, I didn't grow uh, any more height. I didn't get smarter. We're all the same. So everybody listening, you all have power. You all have it in you. And all you have to do is tap into your power because let me tell you, this country, um, yeah, you know, if as we move forward, is going to need every single thing you can do. If it's plumbing, dancing, writing, uh, being a doctor, an engineer, a lawyer, we need everything. That's how this country stays great. And you know, exactly. Exactly. And I believe we have to understand that we are part of our founding father's equation of we the people. Right. Many of us don't feel like we are part, but we are part of that equation. We the people who are still forming a more perfect union. It's not perfect. We're still forming it and we're going through growing pains. But go ahead. Go ahead. You Gary say something. No, I was just going to say, you know what? We're part of it if we stand up for it. We are part of it if we stand up for ourselves and not leave the responsibility to somebody else. If we say, you know what, I am going to vote. I am going to go out there. I'm going to make myself heard. Whatever I think, oh, maybe my vote doesn't count. Maybe it's too late. Maybe it doesn't matter. I'll let somebody else do it. If you decide to stand up for the fact that we are all the same and this is our country, it is our country, we can make a difference. Henry, in this moment, I am seeing, I mean, I've seen it over the years, but I don't know why, but this, well, I do know why, but this moment, yes. I think that we need to look at our children with education, you know, the laughter, you know, right. getting them back into reading again, those little things. You know, um, I heard a story, and I, like I said, everyone and everything has a story. Westmore, I don't know if you know Westmore, but he's an African-American man. He is stellar. He is, he's everything. And he was in the military, but he grew up in Baltimore, New York and in Baltimore. And he didn't want to read. And the way his mother got him into being who he is, is by giving him, he likes sports. She started giving him sports books to read. And he flourished after that. He I totally get it. Yes. And I think we need to reach people where they are. Absolutely. I'm telling you, I know because of my own dyslexia, I took geometry for four years, same course. I took it in regular school and summer school. I finally passed it senior year, summer school, before I could ever go to college. If I didn't pass it, I wouldn't have been accepted. That was uh, August 1963. From August 1963, till October 2020, not one person has ever said the word hypotenuse to me again. I so agree with you. We have to teach our children how they learn, not what we think they should learn. That's true. But with that said, I do believe we have to change the system to a certain extent. We mm -hmm. have cut out so much. I believe our children need to learn civics because a lot of people don't understand Henry, a lot of people don't realize, going back to the we the people, they don't realize that they can make a difference, that they count. So I think we need to teach our children civics again. This, this moment in history has shown me a lot of people don't understand how government works and how you matter. I believe also that we need to teach, we really need to teach about the Holocaust. We really need to teach the truth. We really need to teach the truth about slavery and, and, and Japanese internment. We need to, and all the other atrocities, we need to start teaching and not have little, little paragraphs in the social studies book about these massive atrocities that went on for years, the right. truth about them. I, that's just my opinion. And we also, at this moment, have to teach anger management. What is, what is being unleashed? The, the underbelly, the ugly side of, uh, of this incredible country. It, it is, and now with uh, social media, uh, with, uh, with the internet, nothing gets past us. I mean, the way people treat other people now, whether they don't want to wear a mask, which I don't understand, but hey, 
When, um, did, mask, ma when, when did wearing a mask become political? I yeah. mean, it all depends if your mask has the word vote on it. My vote, my mask does have vote on it. Or Black Lives Matter or something. But wearing a mask has become political. It's about saving your life. It's true. It's true. Not, not just your life, but somebody you don't know's life, which is the way we we built our country i and i can't say that enough i i totally agree with you it's just it's something but you know at the end of the day i just believe that america is great we're going through growing i too do and, and no matter and because we have to say this and, and no matter what we have seen over these our conversation is democracy at its at its best we are allowed we are in this country allowed to talk about strengthening our country we're not in hushed tones or 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 whispering you know my discontent but our discontent for both of us is resounding around the nation and yeah but you know what april what you're saying it we're at a crossroads. I believe this more than ever before. We can go from, and just like that, we can go from being able to say and have a discourse and have another opinion to having to whisper and worry about being turned in just like that. And people don't realize those are the kinds of things that happened in the Holocaust. You, you couldn't even whisper, you no. know, for, and for the civil rights movement in this nation, they couldn't even, three or four people on the street corner, they'd think you were having uh, conspiring to do something and you'd be thrown in jail. Absolutely. So, you know, so, and we're not so far removed from this. I'm 53. Mm -hmm. I was a couple of months old before Dr. King was killed. So just a few years before the Civil Rights Act, the Voting Rights Act, you know, so we are still, this is not that long ago. No. So, Yes. And look how difficult it is for some people in this same country to vote, how hard they make it. And that's where you see who we are, that these that that woman on the news, I, I don't I don't remember where she was in the South, maybe Atlanta, but she sat in her chair with an umbrella in a rainstorm holding her baby. Thank God it was summer. So it was still warm enough but she wasn't going to move until she voted. She wasn't going to leave the line. That is America. That's America. That's the heart of America. Yes. That's the passion for America. Yes. So in, 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 in our final moments, because I'm just so appreciative of you. Yeah, ditto. Yeah, and, and this moment, and I think my, my children just came into my room. They're like, is that, is that? I'm like, yes, you can't see them, I don't think, but they're like. Well, where are they? Let me say hello. Uh-oh, here's one of them. She's, she's learning. She's got a little shirt on. Say hi, Mr. Winkler. Hi. How are you? Good. What is your name? I'm Grace. Her birthday is November 3rd. <laughs> Mine is October 30. We're Scorpios together. <laughs> I call her Princess Grace, believe it or not. You so, do. <laughs> so she was like, wait a minute, is that? I'm like, yes, that is the Fonz. So can you do me a favor before we go? Yes. Hey, can you give me, what would the Fonz right, Let me tell you something, let me tell you something, April. <laughs> I am so happy to be here with you. You know, you're my kind of girl. Hey. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. You know what? We would have- I can't say that it. now in two, you know, without, without the Fonz, I could never say that in 2020. Well, yeah, that's true. But you know, I, I used to wonder, I said, would the Fonz have a black woman on the show? Would he date a black woman? Sure. Back sure. Back on Happy Days? That yes. would have been a scandal. In the beginning, uh, Chris Rock, a uh, part of his comic routine was about sticks. That we, uh, I, I, you know, there was an episode where I went down south with the boys during integration, uh, segregation, and I was, uh, I, we were sitting at the counter, you know, uh, and I walked uh, by a sign that said whites only. I hit the wall and the sign fell down. Oh, I want to so see that one. We, we did, we, we did stories um, that were timely. Uh, on happy days, even though you thought it was a 50s fluff. Yeah. We did one about uh, library cards. The Fonz said to Richie, hey, look at this. You could get a library card for free and you could meet chicks there. 
registration for library cards went up 500% in America the right after that Tuesday. I tell you, you know, the power of those three networks at that time. Yes. And now we have, I mean, can you, you, we could never imagine that, right? You know, back no. then. But it's what we talked about before. There are lots of places to watch entertainment. But if you don't have the human beings to create it, because if it ain't on the page, it ain't on the stage. Mm. If it's not written you, you, and well, you can't do it. If you don't have the human beings to then bring it to life, you could be on any streaming uh, and on any channel and people are going to fall off. Do you think that the expansion of the three networks, ABC, NBC, CBS, to now all of this has really done a good thing for society or because we have a lot of things to look at now. I mean, I remember in college in the, I graduated college 89, I was hearing about the information superhighway when we started getting cable then. I remember MTV and everything. There was an explosion and now right. you see everything. You don't see well-made TV you don't, or, or, or shows. You have reality TV, people fighting. Well, remember April, um, reality TV is cheaper. Reality t uh, is like um, uh, uh, maybe a fourth or less than creating a, uh, a, a, a scripted show. Okay. So that's why uh, reality TV is so big. Do you think that we're doing a good job or do you think we need to go back to... You know what? We're never going to go back. And it, it all depends if the audience is there. Remember this television for the most part is created for the commercial right the 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 show itself is not as as important as it brings eyeballs to a soap suds to a washing machine the soap operas yeah and also the commercial it is um uh the commercial is the beginning and the end of television that's why television really exists. And I think that what we have to do is we have to go back to a, a news, some news station that gives you facts an open. Shoot. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know. <laughs> my phone, I tell you, go ahead. I was like, what in the world? Hey, you answered my call. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, Henry. No, yeah. I was just I was just going to say that um, it is very important that somewhere we get a news channel that is pretty complete, you know, mm -hmm. and that you get both sides and not just brainwashing the left, brainwashing the right, and you can't find exactly what's going on in the world completely. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? I grew up with news, and I think that's one of the reasons why I'm back in news. My family was like that family who had it in the morning on the AM radio, drove with it in the car. Yeah, me too. And then at night, we watched the man who said, that's the way it was. Yes. Walter Cronkite. Yes. You know, and, and that's what I want. We need, that's what I want today, heart and fact. Yes, we are, we are at a at a turning point, at a crossroads, as you say, a moment where we need heart and fact. And I wish it was back then. I, I wish it was some of the things back in the sixties and seven, well, the seventies and eighties. I would say, right? Yeah, seventies and eighties. I wish we had today, but we need to find our center yet again. We will find our center if everybody that is listening to us right now decides, I can play a role. And I will take my responsibility seriously. Amen. Henry Winkler, do you have anything else you'd like to say? Because this has been... No, just that I wish that you can... I'm overpowered by the, the smell of the roses from my garden. Oh. And I wish you could smell them for real. They are, oh, so beautiful. I smell the roses. Look, in the Black community, they said... They say, uh, give people the roses while you can smell them, meaning 
be nice to people and tell them what they mean to you before you transition this world. Right. You have the roses out of your garden. I wish I could have sent them to you. You mean the world to me. You meant the world to me as a child. You were part of my growing up. Every week I made sure I watched you. And mm. I was jealous of, of Pinky Tuscadero and her sister. What was her sister called? Okay, so here's a secret, April. What? You don't have to worry so much about Pinky. I wasn't crazy about her anyway. Oh, uh, no, no, that's between you and me. <laughs> and her cousin leather. was a uh, leather Tuscadero. Leather Susie Quattro, who lives in Europe, who is still a rock and roll star. Wow. Yeah. Well. She was great. That's a secret that I will always keep. Okay. So Henry Winkler, I think you're the best. Thank and, you. Um, I just thank you for being the global citizen that you are. And you are the initial conversation with, and I could not think of anyone better to be with than you. April, I loved meeting you at that political con. I love watching you on television before I ever met you. And I thought this conversation was fantastic. Amen. A global citizen with heart and not afraid and not ashamed to say what he has to say. And you are transparent. That's something that we need. Mm, transparency. And happy birthday to Princess Grace. <laughs> thank you. November 3rd. Henry, be well. Thank you so much for your time. Everyone, thank you, thank you for watching. Henry, be well. Talk thank to you. Soon. Thank you. Everyone, Bye. Conversations with April Ryan, Henry Winkler, our first show. Take care. God bless. See you next you time. You too. Bye-bye, Henry.